that event was uh, a true joy. So if you if you can make it, uh, I, I urge you to uh, to check it out. Um, all right. Good morning, everyone. Nice to, to be with you. Um, talking about you know events for the year. This uh, seminar is about or webinar or web session or our time together is about creating your year and just starting to look ahead and uh, forward to what it is you want to create in 2022. So I want to thank Brianna and Luke uh, and the team at the Small Business Center Belleville uh, for putting this on and being a host. So um, they do a great job and, and great work and, and their live events and their online events, they really put their heart into it. So you'll, you'll get that vibe. Um, and, and they're also really, um, I'm going to say they're user friendly. So if you've got, uh, you know, a business uh, concern you want to talk to them about, or, you know, we need information to help you move forward, um, really tap into the, the, the business center, small business center in Belleville. They're, they're a great team. So on tap today, um, we're going to look at making good use of your time to start. And you're going, oh, yeah, but this is about creating my year. Well, you got to also manage the clock a little, and and we'll we'll, we'll do a little bit of that. And then we'll get into goals, uh, developing maybe a vision and mission. And um, I'm also going to lead a meditation and visualization. This is something kind of new for me, um, but uh, so. Hopefully it'll help you relax a little bit and and get into the uh, habit of um, meditation and visualization in your own day-to-day uh, -day routine. So that's what's on tap today. Um, you may not know it because I'm pretty hyper now doing this session, but maybe about an hour and a half ago, I was in my meditation. So uh, I, I, I do that every day. So did you know? We're going to talk about time that um, because we have to make use of our time. If we're going to create goals, we're going to have to let things go. We're going to have to maybe delegate. We're going to have to maybe um, focus or prioritize. Did you know that we, we spend two and a half uh, years of our lives <laughs> driving a car? Yeah, um, two and a half years driving a car, uh, six months waiting at red lights. So just think next time you're at a red light going, uh, I wonder what month I'm in now, right? Uh, five years waiting in line. Uh, if it's a really good rock concert you want to see, maybe a little more. Um, six years eating. One year uh, of our lives looking for misplaced objects. Never mind lost files on your desktop or your, your laptop. Uh, 23 years in bed. Uh, uh, that to me is like, wow. <laughs> How can I save time there? Um, we also spend two years trying to return phone calls to people who never seem to be in. Not sure what that's about. Seven years in the bathroom, getting ready, showering, whatever. Eight months opening junk mail. And that, that means, uh, you know, junk mail on your email as well. And we didn't even really mention email, but, you know, email, going through email, you know, checking out social media posts. You know, like the, we spend a ton of time on things that are just like, whoa, I can't believe it, right? So these activities, total 50 years of your life, 50 years of your life. It's like, really? <laughs> yeah, next time you're at a red light, don't get any ideas and, you know, think you could maybe speed things up and, and, and you know, maximize your time by going through one. That, that's not uh, what we're saying. Just, just be aware of what we uh, and how we spend our time. 40% of each day is meeting our biological needs. Eight hours is sleeping, give or take one hour or two. Two hours eating, one hour dressing and grooming. So again, these activities are for 50 years of our life. And that means most of the tasks we take on every day, are, they're unavoidable, right? Because it's really about ensuring we survive here um, and maintain our presence here on, on, on Earth. So that kind of task is called a value task. You've got to do it, right? Um, you, you, you've got to do these tasks in order to live. So for example, um, you can, but you can add to these, uh, you can add to your life, you can add value to your life. For example, you could be uh, exercising um, and reading. 
You could be learning, you could be practicing piano, um, you could be taking singing classes, you can add to these, you know, day to day tasks that we just talked about, right? You, you, you can add to them by taking on and adding value to your, your life. So the key to achieving your goals means that you might need to change how you use your time, as I alluded to at the beginning. So we have maintenance tasks. Our maintenance tasks are, you know, grooming and eating and, you know, sleeping. That's what we have to do in order to maintain our life, right? But the key to being more efficient with our time is to combine a value task like learning, reading, listening to podcasts, um, you know, studying something. The key, if you can, is to combine the two. So especially like this time of year when we're, um, we're at the mall shopping. So instead of, uh, you, know, you know, if you want to do your shopping, you can also do a, a value task like, Maybe you park further away and you walk to the mall, so you get a little bit of a walk in. So you want to focus on value tasks. These are things that are going to enhance your life and make your life and work better, right? So you may want to incorporate training, coaching, or team building into your into your day to day life and into your work life. For example, I know um, as I work, if I'm working on developing a training program or I'm working on writing an article, I might listen to a podcast at the same time. So I'm getting you know, uh, some education, as well as being productive in my day to day business and work. So one of the things you you need to do in order to maximize and make use of your time is also decide what's crucial and not crucial. And my view is, um, do the crucial things first, right? Um, Now, what's crucial for you may not be crucial for someone else. So what what you want to do is make a list of crucial items on your to do list every day or every week. And remember that when you do the crucial things first, it's like it's like uh, Brian Tracy calls it. He's an author speaker and calls it uh, drink the frog, which means do the hard things first and the rest of the day just flows. So the things that give you the biggest payoff for your time invested are crucial. So that might mean um, speaking to a new client, working on a proposal, um, writing uh, every day uh, so that you finish and complete your book, right? These are, this is crucial, right? Because it's going to give you your biggest payoff. You know, when you're, you're when your book is done and you're completed and and it's published, you're going to feel such pride and 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 joy and exhilaration, right? So everything else you can label not so crucial, right? So crucial items um, on your daily life are usually long. They take a long time. They may be difficult to achieve. I just spoke to a colleague this morning, and he's working on um, year end reports to give to the government. He's not happy about it. That's not something that he likes to do, but it's crucial to, in that those reports need to be in the, the, the province, the, the government, in order for them to get funding for next year. So it's crucial for him to work on it. And then once he's complete, then he can work on the things that maybe bring him a little bit more joy, a little bit more fun, right? So the non-crucial items may be quicker and more fun to do, but the crucial items for for you or for, you know, I know for me, it may be to work on a sales presentation, one that's maybe a little bit longer, right? Tedious, maybe it's challenging. Um, Whereas the non-crucial might be to go through my junk mail and reply to emails or build paperclip models, you know, at my desk. So what I'm trying to say here in, in the teaching in this is take on the crucial things, just dive in and do it. You know, I was saying there's nothing to it but to do it. So it's easy to go through, you know, the easy tasks because they're not that stressful. They don't take a lot of time, um, but it's more important and vital to your overall success to take on the crucial items. So just have that in mind as we look at you know, creating our goals and our vision and where we want to be in the new year. So making your goals, desires, and vision uh, come true means that you've got to manage your time. And you may, be, you may need help 
to reach your goals. Don't be afraid to ask for that help. Don't be afraid to, you know, like this colleague of mine, um, he, he's getting help on, on these reports. Um, so, you know, smart move. It's not his um, joy. He doesn't love doing it, but he knows it's part of the, the crucial thing that needs to get done in order to ensure that he's uh, still employed next year. So you really want to start to manage your time better, uh, decide what's crucial, um, have a do, delegate, or dismiss list. So am I going to do it? Great. By when? Or am I going to delegate it? Um, last year, uh, I guess this time last year, I was reading a book called Who Not How by uh, strategic coach Dan Sullivan. He's based actually here in Canada and, um, and Dr. Benjamin Hardy. And they co-wrote a book called Who Not How. And the teaching in the book was as you create your business, as you move forward, and if you want to grow it or expand it or take on something new, you don't have to do it all by yourself. You don't have to achieve your goals all by yourself. You're not an island. So the, the, the concept of the book, Who Not How, is not to ask, how am I going to do this? It's to ask yourself, who do I need? to bring in to help me accomplish my, my goals. So start, if I can impart one thing on you today that's really important for you to take away, start to think this year, moving forward and next into next year, you know, who can you ask to help you achieve your goals? We don't have to do it all by ourselves. So who can you ask for help? And it doesn't, if you're just starting out and maybe money is a challenge, it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. There are students you can tap into. There's an organization um, in Canada called Ripen, R-I-I-P-E-N.com. And you can post your business project or goals up on their website. And you then have access to students from across Canada, university and college students from across Canada, to um, ask them to help you uh, on your project, on your business, on a new idea. So that's that's one place you can go and ask uh, for help. So get into that mindset as you start, as we start to really create what we want to create today for next year and moving forward. Think of don't think that you've got to do it. Like, how am I going to do it? That's that kind of that's a heavy question. I already feel like like that's weighing on my shoulders as I think of how am I going to do this rather than who can I ask for help. So get into that sort of frame of mind. And I really do encourage you to um, pick up that book or ask Santa for that book um, this year. I think you really in, will enjoy it. Um, it's it's a really it's a nice book. It's an easy read. So. Let's uh, dive in now to the goals part, and we're going to, you know, set some goals, but also get some help, right? I like this quote by Mel Robbins, a goal is a dream with a deadline. I like that. So I want you to do a little bit of inner work and see if you can answer these questions for a few moments, okay? And then we'll take up some of your answers. So what's one thing you're going to be unstoppable about this, this year or this coming year? Okay, what's one thing you're going to be unstoppable about? What's one thing you want to create, change, or um, see have happen in your life? So what's that one thing? Who will you let in on it so they can hold you accountable? So do you have a mentor or an accountability partner in your life or in your work or in your business that you can talk to maybe every other week just to share, hey, how are you coming along on that, right? And then the next question I want you to work on is, what's the first action step you will do to make this goal or dream or a vision um, happen? What's the first action step that you're going to take? And then what are three to five actions you can take on this for the rest of this month to help you maybe grow your business or uh, create this idea or, you know, achieve this uh, one thing that you're going to be unstoppable about. What are three to five actions and when will you complete it by? So give yourself that, you know, I've got your, your goal is a dream with a deadline. Give yourself a deadline as to when you're going to complete these actions by. 
All right, is everybody clear? Are you all right to, to work this through? Take a few minutes and then, then we'll, we'll hear from a few of you. You can write your answers in the chat and, then, and or you can speak, you know, speak about it too. All right, any questions? Okay, go. <laughs> I'm here, if you have questions, write them in the chat. So it's that one thing that you're going to be unstoppable about this year and into next. Who can hold you accountable? Do you have a mentor, somebody in mind? What's that first action step? And what are three to five action steps you can take? And then when will you complete it by? Another couple of minutes. I'll just play a little background music as you do this. It's when I'm setting up on my phone here. Okay, another, another minute. And you can um, write your answers in the chat. 
And I'm uh, Abbas. I'm just gonna write uh, ripen in in the um, chat the website link. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, good job. Good job, everybody. I hope you're, you're done. Who'd like to share? And one of you can just, you know, speak out and, and up. Who'd like to share? Um, what's one thing you want to be unstoppable about in the next, you know, in, in the next year? What's one thing you want to be unstoppable about in the next year? Anybody? Um, yeah, this is this is Garrett Jackson speaking. Hey, Garrett. Um, Welcome. One thing, thank you. Um, one thing I'd like to be unstoppable about is is taking my detail shop and and creating um, the most premier shop around locally here in Belleville, the most uh, um, luxurious or sought after shop to to go to. Um, a way that uh, can help me do that is by allowing my wife Jen to to be a part of it. She she really motivates me and keeps me accountable and grounded and humble. Um, and one of the first things I need to do to, to make that a reality is, is maintaining what I actually already have and, and making sure it's up to par and uh, and can can do what it's designed to do and, and what I need it to. Um, some other things I can do to help improve on that are to research some new tools and equipment that I can use to, to make my life a little bit easier and, uh, and start purchasing those or looking at what I can do to, to uh, obtain those tools and, and chemicals. Um, the next thing would be getting getting the word out to the public so that people know I'm I'm here and that they can they can start to see what I do have to offer, um, which will help make make it all a reality. Um, I'd like to do it as soon as possible. This is kind of a slow season for us, with it being uh, winter and and the kind of the off season as far as auto detailing goes. Um, so I'd like to have the reputation built and and um, some of the notoriety built by spring of this year, April, May of this year, ideally. Yeah. So my, my work cut out for me and a lot of work ahead of me to, to do, but I've been in the industry a long time. So the experience is there. I just need to uh, uh, implement it and, and make sure that I'm growing rather than just being complacent and, and getting by. Yeah, and, and this time of year is a really good opportunity for you to, um, uh, to grow it and to develop it and really set a strong foundation. And, and then start the marketing, you know, in sort of, you know, February, March timeframe and, and get known. So way to go, Garrett. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else want to share? I, I'm going to go to the chat. Um, nope. Okay. Uh, I think that was a really, yeah. Um, um, Abilash, uh, what would you, you, you got your hand up. Yeah, Abby. 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 <laughs> okay. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. This is great. I love it. Thank you so much, David. Um, so I, I was actually setting up a resolution by April 30th. I should complete my orientation um, uh, manual, my my operations manual. I'm really working on it. It takes a lot of time to write down that operations manual. So that like now as soon as I hear that there's a group that I can actually reach out to get this thing down. It's a simple thing to write it down, but it takes so many hours of work. So that's really good. So I'm technically planning or, I, well, I'm keeping a deadline of April 30th to accomplish my operations manual. Excellent. And for those that don't know what an operations manual, um, Abby, I, I think it's as important as your business plan operations manual is how you do everything in your business. So um, think of a McDonald's, for example, and you know, when you go to McDonald's, you come up to the drive through Well, they train that person at the cash to welcome you. I may take your order. And then they give the order to the, you know, the, the person flipping burgers. And then the person flipping burgers is trained how to do that. You know, two minutes on either side. Then you add the, the special sauce, pickles, lettuce, cheese, onions on a sesame seed bun, right? And then and then you pick up your order. And you know, so it it it's it, an operations manual describes how you do everything in your business. And and so Abby, I like the fact you've got a long-term goal with this, because it, yep. it is it it's it's a long-term thing. It's it's probably ongoing too. Even when you're done, 
you, you know, like in Japan, businesses uh, are trained on the system called CANI, C-N-I, and that in CANI means constant and never-ending improvement. So even though you all have your 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 operations manual done by April, you'll always want to tweak it and make things better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I totally understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I like them. Good examples. I hope that helps everybody. And you know what? Your, your one thing could be something more personal, right? Uh, maybe it's health, maybe it's fitness, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's family, whatever it is for you, what is it that you're going to be unstoppable about? And then get that accountability in play to help you uh, achieve what you want, right? And, and, and set that timeline. Um, Mel Robbins, by the way, uh, the, who I quoted here, she's uh, an author, speaker, um, wonderful, uh, does wonderful work. Actually, I've got a video of hers uh, worked into today's seminar. All right. Good work, everyone. Nice start. Let's watch this. This is a little video. It's about three minutes. It's um, Simon Sinek. I'm not sure if you've heard of him. Uh, this is another book you can ask Santa for. <laughs> He's the author of a book called What's Your Why? And here he talks about vision, mission, and goals and the distinction between them. And he uses a very interesting example as to uh, how um, creating a mission has played out to our neighbors in the South. He uses the U.S. as an example. So here, we'll watch this and then we'll, we'll brainstorm on it. And um, here goes. It's about three minutes. Make sure your volume's up. And um, he's a very dynamic speaker, so I think you'll enjoy watching this. So people are always talking about visions and missions and all of this stuff. Um, and um, when people ask me, like, what example should I look to? Like, what company should I? I'm like, here's an organization <laughs> with a vision, a cause. It was founded with a, a cause. Um, it's an entrepreneurial venture. It's, it, America is an experiment. It's an entrepreneurial venture where a bunch of people got together and decided we needed to start our own country um, um, because there were certain obstacles that were getting in the way of a vision that we had of a better kind of country, but a kind of company, right? Um, and they stated it right at the beginning, all men are created equal, endowed with these unalienable rights amongst, amongst which include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it's not, a, uh, it's not just um, a competitive statement, like to be the best, to be the most respected. That's not what it was. And I'm amazed how many companies start their visions or missions right. with those that terribly egocentric language. Right. It was an ideal. And the amazing thing is, is we've been good at it and bad at it in our history, but it's endured for 240 plus years because we fundamentally believe that we are at our best when we're pursuing that. But it is an ideal. We will never actually achieve all people are equal, but we will die trying. And that's the point. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for a company, which is true vision inside a company is something that has nothing to do with your product. It is an ideal to which you will attempt to build and advance that ideal through your company with your product. You will never achieve the ideal, but you'll die trying. And this is what gives our work meaning. Mm -hmm. This is what it gives our lives purpose, mm -hmm. right? The difference between vision and a goal is the finish line. A goal is 26.2 miles. You can simply count the metrics and know when you've completed your goal. A vision is having a crystal clear sense of what the finish line looks like, but no idea of how far away it is. Mm -hmm. And it's and the reality is you will spend your entire life never actually crossing the finish line, but the joy that every marathon you complete, you feel like you're getting closer. Every milestone that you accomplish makes you feel like you're getting closer and closer to the ideal. And this is what gives our life and our work meaning. So, so what did you think? Let, let's open up the, you know, the, the, this call, you can unmute yourself. Why is a vision mission vital to you moving forward? Why is a mission and vision vital to you moving forward? Who'd like to share? You can share in the chat too. Well, to me, if you don't have a vision and mission, you don't know how to get there. I mean, you have to have some kind of um, picture and, and in your mind of what you're wanting. And before you can even figure out what it is you need to do to get there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head, Patty. It's like, it's like, it's like if I told you to drive, you know, to California without a map or a GPS on your, in your car, 
you, you might get lost. You might end up in Winnipeg, right? Um, so that's that's what the mission and vision does. It helps give you that purpose and, the, and that direction forward with what it is you want to create. So um, thanks, Patty. Uh, Brenda's who'd like to- gonna, Brenda's gonna hand up there. What's that? Brenda's Brenda. Hand up. Oh, hey, Brenda, go ahead, yeah. Um, I think having um, a vision and mission for your business helps you have more clarity of purpose, clarity of direction, and also it helps you understand your unique value proposition. What are you, um, why are you creating your business? What type of services are you creating for um, your customers, your clients, or your end beneficiaries, and how um, you want to scale that business? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So thank you, Brenda. That, that and I like the fact you mentioned the value proposition too. And so you, you've done your homework, obviously. So thank you. Um, uh, in the chat, Abby says um, your day-to-day -day work and planning is based on it, and and this is your go-to to when you encounter a problem. Yeah, exactly. It'll help you keep moving forward and 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 break through those days where you know what, you are going through challenges. And, and it's like, you, you need to remind yourself, why am I doing this again? What's my why? So that's the next question that, that we can chat about here quickly. Um, why is having a compelling why also key to you achieving good things? And what is a why that might help you move forward in 2022? What's, what, why is having a why Helpful, and what is uh, a why that you might want to um, share with others here today? Anybody want to? You can write it in the chat if you want. Oh, we got a quiet group. So for me, having a why it, again, it it just gives you a deeper purpose, a deeper sense of. Okay, this is what I want to do, and here's my why. Here's who I want to affect. Here's the change I want to bring into the world. Here's how I want to make my communities better. Here's how I want to make a, a, an impact in a certain area. Maybe you're in a, a certain industry sector, and you want to ha have a, a deeper impact. Your why is is sort of gives you that purpose and that that juice to to, to keep you going. Abby, you've got your hand up. Please share. Yeah, so uh, it's a little bit more than a typing, so I thought I will, I will talk <laughs> instead. Okay, thanks. So the why, why I keep doing this, even though, you know, like business is down, it's tough, paying overhead is still tough, but still I'm keep going. There's a reason why. My why to keep my business going on, I'm actually running um, a physio um, rehab clinic. So technically the why, because there's actually a different type of struggles. What is um, it might sound weird for some people, but it's it's true. There is actually a lot of struggles that is in the community that is actually not necessary. Some of the struggles could have had, could have been fixed in you know and eliminated uh, in a time frame, and you didn't have to have to deal with that struggle and keep moving forward with your better quality of living. So there's a there's we have a huge role in the community to eliminate that unnecessary struggles if i can do that and help with the with the customer why should i stop you know right that's yeah. that's my why to keep me moving even though it's a tough time but that keep me moving to help those people and and i understand there are some necessary struggles in life like aging you cannot help it that has to happen but at the same time you don't have to be in pain so if i can eliminate some of those struggles that is my biggest why to continue i, I love it thank you abby you're welcome. Some great shares from you. Thank you for this this morning. Um, I'm going to go to the chat. Courtney writes, and thank you, Courtney, for sharing this. For any opportunity or obstacles that come your way, knowing your why provides clarity as to whether this thing will put you closer to your end goal or move you further away from it. Yeah, well, well said, Courtney. Thank you. And Abby and, and Patty, thank you, everybody, for sharing. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the thing is, you want to start to have a big why, right? Um, Tony Robbins says, you know, start turning your shoulds into musts. So what, in, in order for you to, you know, to take action, instead of saying, yeah, I should do it, it's, which is kind of like lukewarm, say I must do it. 
And you'll see, you'll, you'll feel like as you create what you want in the new year moving forward, that you'll be more empowered when you change that one word, should to must. When you, when you change that one word, you'll feel like your energy shift, right? Because your should are kind of like, yeah, I should, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but when I must, you feel more empowered. Like I must do this, right? So um, my question to you is, what are three shoulds you want to change into a must? So a little bit more inner work. And what is, what's your one big should that you must take action on the moment you leave here today? So if you can answer those two questions, I'll give you about a minute and a couple minutes. What are three shoulds you want to change into a must? And, you know, maybe it's like, well, I should get up earlier, right? Well, I must get up earlier, or I should make um, uh, calls to clients, you know? Well, maybe I must. So what are three shoulds for you? And then what's one big should that you want to uh, turn to a must? You're going to do that, like, starting the minute you leave here today, all right? So take a few minutes just to, to work on this. Just those two questions. There's a little inner, inner work today, which is good. So another minute, shouldn't take too long. All right, um, what are three shoulds you want to change into a must? You can write it in the chat or you can quickly unmute yourself. Yeah, Patty. Okay, um, I the three shoulds is I should <laughs> um, <laughs> change my morning routine so that I'm getting into work mode sooner. Uh, I should spend less time on social media. Okay, but you're now you're going to do you must right? Is, oh yes. So I, instead of I sh I should uh, change what was it my morning routine? I must change my morning routine so that okay. I get started into work mode sooner. The other one, another one, is spending less time on social media. So I must spend less time on social media. And I'm not talking about posting for my business. I'm talking no. about the scrolling and the, yeah. you know, um, and I must start being more, uh, doing more physical activities, exercising, which yes. I have been lax in doing. <laughs> um, and my, my one big should that I must do 
that I'm going to do when I leave here today is I must spend time on my website to update, to create blog, to create a blog, to, um, I've been avoiding it. So I must do that. Okay. I want to hear after. <laughs> uh, amen to social media, Patty, in the chat. Ayla writes, Ayla Berry writes, amen to social media. Brenda concurs. Uh, she agrees. Amen to social media because it, it consumes her time. Here too, Brenda. <laughs> it really does. Excellent. Patty, beautiful examples. Thank you so much. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we're hard on ourselves, right, with our shoulds. So, you know, uh, what happens today, you always, you, you, you want to do your best. That's it, that's it with creating what you want moving forward. You want, always want to just do your best because you know what, five years from now, it might not even matter, right? Things won't matter. So, you know, have a, in sort of embrace a, an air of lightheartedness about your goals and, and what you want to create, you know, have an air of lightness about it because, you know, sometimes we fall short and sometimes we make them and, you know, five years from now, it'll be something new that we must or, or you know, we should not do anymore and we must do, right? So have an air, um, that feeling of, yeah, you know, just lightness about it, if you can. And, oh, take the word try out of your vocabulary. That's a challenge for everybody this, this year moving forward. Take the word try moving out of your vocabulary. I'll give you an example. So you see this cup? I'm holding it in my hand. So if I tell myself, hey, try and lift it out of your hand. Try. Don't do it. Try. Right? I'm trying. I'm not doing it. I'm trying. I'm trying. Now this arm's getting sore because I'm trying. I'm not doing it. Right? So if I just say, hey, lift the cup out of my hand, easy. Done. Right? So trying is trying. <laughs> it's hard. So don't try, just do, right? Remember Yoda from um, Star Wars? There is no try. There is only do or do not, right? Um, I'm going to just go to the chat before we move on. Um, Ayla says, I'm, I, I must learn to delegate and be okay with other people doing the job that I don't need to do by myself. I love it. And, and that, that's what Abby was saying at, earlier. He's writing a operations manual, which is which you, you use to train people to do the work you, you don't want to do anymore, right? So, you know, train people to do the work you don't want to do, where you can now focus on the things you must do, the things you love to do, the things that bring you joy, the things that bring you abundance in your business. So that's really, uh, really critical and really important. Thanks, Ayla, for sharing that. So, you know, ideally, um, you want to go for your goals, right? You know, be real about it. Be in integrity. Do it like it matters. Do it, do, it, do it like your life depends on you doing it. You know, move mountains to be your word. Really important, especially in business, right? If you're not your word and you seem flaky to other people or you don't return calls right away, like, you're, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause your business not to do as well as you could. And try and overcome your fears, you know. Um, really important, when we're taking on something new, we have fear and doubt that creeps in. And you've gotta let those thoughts go and the fears go. Um, and one way I, I do, uh, I manage my fears is I walk through the worst case scenario and then the best case scenario. And usually I find the best case scenario is way more, there's way more on the best, side than there is on the worst side, right? So it, it behooves you to move through your fears, right? And and because the worst case is, is never that bad, but the best case is like, wow, there's all, like all kinds of things that are, are possible. So watch, watch the fears and, and, and the doubts. There's a saying my friend uh, Tracy uh, Clark says, when you doubt, you go without, which I kind of like that saying. I'm just going to go to the chat because Brenda writes, I must get a functional website for her business. These are some of her goals. I must deprioritize and set anti-goals. Wow. Okay. Some activities that have no purpose in her personal development and business journey. I must uh, start saying no and not yet a lot. Yeah, I love it. And I like anti-goals. Sometimes 
you know, the power of having an app in the middle of the day, just because you need to rest and stop or the power of, you know, going for a walk um, after you've been at your desk all morning working is really, really beneficial. That's an anti goal. It helps you personally, it helps you, you know, mentally and emotionally and physically um, be able to take on the rest of the day. So really good, good stuff. Um, you want to also set smart goals. I can't believe I'm teaching this. But um, smart goals are make sure what you want to create in the new year, that it's specific. It's not like, yeah, I want to be a millionaire. Well, yeah, that's that's good. But be more specific, you know, make it. Um, so maybe I want to be a millionaire uh, by selling real estate or, you know, I want to I want my business to sell 10,000 chocolates this year. Right. So make your goal specific. Make sure it's measurable. You, you, there's there's actually something you can me measure it by. Right. Um, that it's attainable. Can can you actually do it? Are you committed to doing it? Right. Uh, again, you know, who not how who can help you attain it? Maybe you don't you don't have to do it all by yourself. Be realistic, too. You know, is, is being a millionaire this year realistic in my work with entrepreneurs? Uh, I don't think I've seen one entrepreneur do it in one year <laughs> yet. Um, however, if any of you do, you let me know because I'm, I'm, I do a podcast and I'm, I'm interviewing you. So be realistic uh, and timely with your goals. You know, set a deadline. Remember, goals are dreams with a deadline. And so have a deadline, have a have a date in mind, right? And, you know, I remember... Um, uh, Jim Carrey, the comedian, uh, he was interviewed um, on a TV show, daytime TV show, and he had a goal of uh, making his first million. And um, he actually wrote a check to himself and he put it in his wallet. And the check was sort of tattered and torn because he hadn't done it yet. Soon after he did that TV show, he got the deal to be in the movie Dumb and Dumber. And he got paid a million dollars. So he achieved his goal just by visualizing it and, and seeing it in his mind eye. Now, of course, he had to take action to achieve it. After he had accomplished it, he went back on that show and he said, they, he was asked, so way to go, you accomplished your goal. What did you learn? He said, what I learned was who I had to be in order to achieve that. So he was really proud of the person he became uh, in, in his quest to achieve uh, and get that starring role and that money in the movie Dumb and Dumber. And that movie kind of really set his career in motion. And, and then, you know, there's been other movies as well. So make sure, are your goals smart? Do you have goals? Do you have them written down? Do you have an action plan, maybe in your or a business plan or an operations manual? Make sure your goals are in there. The other really critical thing is, have a, a, a BHAG this year moving forward. So what's a BHAG? It's a big, hairy, audacious goal. It's, it's something that's going to get your adrenaline running. Maybe you want to uh, do skydiving, right? Or tree, uh, what do they call it? Tree, um, zip lining, right? In, on trees, right? So have some big, hairy, audacious goal you want to create that's going to get you out of bed ready to pounce, right? Um, what's one big goal you've thought about doing, but that you haven't told anyone about? What's one big goal that you've thought of doing, but you've never really shared it with anybody? And then just do it. So I'm going to get you into breakout rooms. Um, oh, I don't think I can. Sorry, uh, David, I'll make you the host one second. Okay. I apologize. No worries. You should be able to now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get you into breakout rooms and, and smaller ones where um, you're going to share. There's one person that is unable to be in a breakout room. Okay. Sean, I believe. S. S yeah, Sean. Sean. Yeah, okay. okay. It's the only right. person that's unable to. So if you do put that person in a group. Um, yeah, this won't be able to do much. Okay, so I'm going to get into breakout rooms, and you're just going to have like three minutes to, sh um, well, four minutes to share your um, big, hairy, audacious goal, 
And um, actually, I'll do, I'll, I'll do three with the countdown timer. So each of you have a minute and a half to share. What's one big Harry Dish score you've never told anybody? And now today's the day where you're going to say, hey, this is what I want to really, really do, okay, in the next year ahead. So um, it, it, that's all you're going to discuss. So make sure you, you each take time to discuss this. And uh, there's three minutes and a 60-second countdown. And we'll see you back in the room. All right. So what's your one big goal? And, uh, you know, and who can hold you uh, sort of accountable to it? Okay. All right. We'll see you in a few minutes. I'm going to join. good um who'd like to share maybe uh their their big hairy audacious goal Any, anybody i'll good. go but it's like a personal one okay um if, if anyone knows me um i am a crazy horse kid i can say that still i'm still kind of a kid um for for most of you i'm probably still a kid um but I have some crazy horse dreams that I want to achieve. It may not be this year. Um, it may be next year. But ideally, if I have enough vacation days, there's a big, huge show in Oklahoma. And it's pretty much like the best of the best horses go. And it's when their first year of the horses is running. Um, I have a horse that could potentially be um, that caliber. And my dream is to go down there and compete. So wow. that would be that's my ultimate dream. Um, but I also have a backup dream if I don't have enough vacation days. So, <laughs> or, or leave of absence for a month, you know, I'm just saying, uh, I don't know if I can afford that. Yeah. <laughs> I might need some extra funding to be able to afford to take a month off work, but, uh, that is just something that I want to do one day. I don't know if I can do it now or a couple of years from now, or say a couple of horses down the road. But usually that's my one dream. I love it. I love it. Thanks. Thanks, Brianna, for sharing that. Anybody else want to share one? Sorry? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Happy? Yeah. Okay. I know yours is to get a mentor. Do you have one that you assessment for Tommy? Uh, you know? I think she's with the I don't know how to meet them. Okay. All right. Um, we've done a lot of inner work, We're probably a little tired. Um, let's take a little five minute break and we'll come back and we'll get more into some more meat, a couple more videos and uh, really get you fired up to, to take on the new year ahead. All right. So let's take a little five minute stretch break and um, okay. everybody good. All right. We'll see you in five. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, so I hope you had a nice break. You thought about your goals, your vision. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna lead you through a little guided meditation here for five minutes. I'm gonna um, cue some music up. Uh, it's relaxing flute music. And um, I'm gonna go off um, camera because I, 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 uh, I wanna do this kind of quietly. Um, and what I want you to do is just sort of um, close your eyes and and uh, and breathe a little bit and um, and and just get relaxed. Like relax your you know your your shoulders, your arms. Put your your arms in your lap um, and and just just relax a little bit. And I'll have this music going in the back. And I want you to visualize that big, hairy, audacious goal, whether it's a business or horses or taking your business and, and franchising it. See, see yourself actually just, just doing it, right? Like, what's the first step you're going to take in, in making this trip to Oklahoma or, you know, franchising your business? Just close your eyes and... Breathe in, breathe in deeply for four seconds. Hold it for four seconds at the top of your head. Let it go. And start to see in your mind's eye, you know, the start of this goal taking place, this big, hairy, audacious goal that you share with somebody in the chat. Start to see it 
What's that first step you're doing? Breathe in for four, hold it for four. Breathe out. Who's with you in this journey towards your big, hairy, audacious goal? Who's helping you? Who are you working with on this? See them in your mind's eye. Next step, breathe in again. Hold it for four. Let go for four. See yourself in, in this new goal that you want to create. And it's a few months from now. What's happened? What's happened since? Who have you met? What actions have you done? Did you book your plane ticket to Oklahoma? Did you get approved for a month of vacation? Did you talk to the Franchising Association? Did you hire a web designer to help you do your website? Or, you know, do you have somebody that, that loves your blogging that they've wanted you to write for their magazine? See, your, see yourself actually doing it. What are some steps? What's happening three, two to three, four months from now? See it in your mind's eye. See, you know, hear the conversations. See the environment that you're in, who you're talking to. Maybe you're out riding your horse and feeding the horse, getting ready, getting ready for this big event. See it. Visualize it, create it in your mind. Breathe in, relax. Breathe in for four, hold it for four. Let it go. Now you're six months out. What's happening in six months? Where are you? Where are you in this journey to achieve your goal? Your big, hairy, audacious goal? Where are you at now? And you, do you see yourself? Do you feel yourself? Do you feel you're near to the finish line? Do you feel that, yeah, this is really taking place now. This is really taking shape. My idea, my goal is happening. How do you feel? You're in a state of joy. Are you excited? See it, feel it. Where are you? Who are you with? What are the sights? What are the sounds? Just see it in your mind's eye. Breathe in. Hold it for four. And release for four. Now it's nine months. Wow, you're almost there. We're into the fall of next year, September. What's going on then? Have you accomplished your goal maybe? Have you accomplished your BHAG? What's it feel like? Maybe you're already thinking, oh, where can I go next? What do you want to create this time, nine months from now? See it, feel it, create it in your mind's eye. Breathe in, breathe it in, own it. Mm. It's exciting. Who are you with? What good news did you get? How do you feel? And then it's a year from now. December 7th, 2022. What's going on this year? What are you proud about? What are you happy about what you've you accomplished? Well, didn't want to do that. 
Sorry, guys. So that that'll that'll kill the uh, that'll kill the uh, meditation. But just see it a year from now if you can get back into that state. And what's going on? And what are you happy about? What are you proud about? Do you see yourself celebrating a year from now? Do you know, maybe you're on the the steps and you're you're doing the rocky routine. You know, you're jumping up and down with your hands in the air. Just see yourself a year from now. And then slowly breathe in. Hold it. Four seconds. Let it go for four seconds. And then hold it. And slowly now come back into the room. Open your eyes. Come back into the room. And let's share, if you're okay to, what you saw. What did you see in your mind's eye in that meditation journey, in your visualization? What did you see? Anybody want to share what they saw, what they witnessed, how they felt? I just want to share a book I'm, I've been reading um, that a colleague um, pointed me towards. And it's uh, a book by Neville Goddard called Infinite Potentials. He, he, he's not with us anymore, but he was sort of uh, in and around, uh, he was popular um, in and around when Napoleon Hill was popular. And he talks a lot about um, visualizing and um, seeing, using your mind to create your reality. And I think that, uh, visualization is really important habit to get into to actually see your yourself you know see what it is you want to create come to be so who'd like to share what they saw in that meditation anybody any any you can write it in the chat if you don't want to you know say it out loud that's fine too okay cool um oh the author's name is neville goddard here's the book it's neville goddard right here up top I'm almost done. So, all right. So hopefully, um, um, hopefully you saw something. Hopefully you, you feel a little bit relaxed, but really important to get into that habit of visual, visualizing your vision, right? So it's we're going to work on creating your vision for the year ahead. And a vision is... Um, it's, it's your goal. It's the optimal desired future state. So it's really a mental picture of what you want for your life, for your company, and what you want to achieve over time. The visualization just anchors it in. And it provides guidance and inspiration to you uh, as an individual owning a business, or if you have a, a company, uh, a, vis a vision uh, galvanizes the company. Um, it actually inspires people to want to work with you or to invest in you. Um, as the late Dr. Stephen Covey said, your vision functions as your North Star. And um, that's the direction you want to move in. And so we're going to have you work on a, a vision statement for your business for, or, or your life for the year ahead. So vision is really a picture or idea you have in your mind of yourself, your business, or anything that you want to have happen. And a clear vision helps you pursue your dreams and goals. So it's really important to be clear, right? So your vision is going to help you overcome obstacles. It's going to help you define um, your focus and create a purpose that you can use as a measurement for your success. And if you don't have a vision, what you'll find is you're not as motivated or inspired because you, you lack that drive and you become your life just becomes a, an order of events. So it's really important to have that vision. What is it that you're shooting for in the next year? So to write it, there's, it's, it you're not writing a, a, an essay here or a book, but you, you, we're going to distill it into three lines. So here's the formula I use to create a vision. Five years from now, your company, your name, whatever you want, will have accomplished what big goal or goals for whom and how will they benefit? So five years from now, 
your company or your name will have accomplished what big goals for whom and how will they benefit. So when you use this formula, it gets you thinking of what you want to create and it gets you thinking off into the distance, right? And then you start working on it. So here's some examples. So within the next five years, the Women's Center will have created a, uh, a help create a safer, more harmonious community, helping women acquire the education skills and resources needed to build self-sufficient, prosperous lives. Or if you've got a tech company, maybe you know, you're gonna be the leading provider, this is the big goal, right? In the next five years of management software to North American small businesses. How? By creating customizable user-friendly software to meet small business needs. Or if you've got a service, Tiny Tots Diaper Service will be the top grossing diaper service in the Lower Mainland by providing reliable, affordable services for moms and dads with small children. So they're focused on a geographical area. That could be you. Maybe, you know, um, um, you want to just focus on your area in Belleville. We already heard that earlier today with Garrett. So, you know, so now we're going to get you to create your own uh, vision statement. So five years from now, your company name will have accomplished what big goal or goals for whom and how they benefit. Take a few minutes just to create this. If you have any questions, just write them in the chat. When you're done, you can unmute or you can write them in the chat five years from now. You'll have accomplished what big goals for whom and how they benefit. Here are the samples again. This is the aim. This is what you want to sort of write or want yours to sort of look like. Ah. Okay, great work. Um, just another 30 seconds. All right, anybody want to share or write it in the chat? Okay, we're, we're, we got quiet. So I really encourage you to work on this. And these um, vision statements, 
can easily be um, used in er uh, different areas in your business. If you have a business plan, you, I put mine in my business plan. Um, I also uh, would put it on a website, maybe even into a sales letter to a client that you're working with. Hey, this is our, this is, you know, five years from now, our company, our, our aim is to, to do this, right? And, and for whom and how they benefit. So you can use your vision statement in a variety of ways, but ideally it's, it's, it's for you to have um, a clear direction as to what you wanna work on and achieve. Does that make sense? We taught, we did a visualization and we talked about um, creating our vision. And now what I really urge you to do is get in the habit of visualizing your success visualizing your goals every day um, and even just five, 10 minutes a day, do a, a visualization, see your day going well. I'm just gonna share another video. And this is about three minutes long, it won't take long. And it's about uh, visualization and the importance of visualization. And they talk about um, a study that was done by a Dr. Blizzato with professional basketball players. And it was inspired by uh, the Chicago Bulls head coach back in the day, Phil Jackson. And Phil Jackson would take his team and not only would they practice, but they would visualize them winning the basketball game. And when Phil Jackson was head coach of the Chicago Bulls back in the 90s, they won six championships in a row, almost unheard of. Mind you, they had a guy like Michael Jordan on the team, Scottie Pippen, a few others. But they attributed, and Phil Jackson was called a nickname, the Zen coach, because he would lead his team through not only a practice, but seeing themselves win. So here's a little video talking about the uh, basketball players that practiced and visualized. So three minutes, here goes. How amazing would it be to see something happening in your head and then for it to manifest in real life? Well, in this video, we are going over the power of visualization and how it can teach you to manifest almost anything you want. So first, what is visualization? Well, put simply, visualization is similar to daydreaming. It's when you deliberately play images or mental movies in your head of a desired outcome you have. You've absolutely done this before in your life, even if you didn't realize it. However, what you probably weren't aware of is the power of visualization and how it can actually help you to achieve the results you visualize about. You see, our brains actually have trouble differentiating between reality and a very vivid visualization. What this means is that if you can visualize something happening so clearly, you can literally trick your brain into thinking it has happened. There have actually been numerous studies to prove this. One of my favorites is a study that was done with free throws in basketball. They separated people into three groups, those that did nothing, those that practiced free throws every single day for an hour, and those that didn't practice any uh, free throws, but instead vividly visualized themselves taking free throws and making every single one. Then after a few weeks of this, they tested each group to see who would make the most free throws. Now, obviously the ones that didn't practice at all, there was no improvement and they were well behind the other two groups. But now most would assume that the ones who practiced the free throws during those weeks would make the most by a landslide, landslide when they were tested, but they didn't. In fact, there was only a 1% difference between the players that practiced one hour every single day and the players that didn't practice but actually visualize themselves practicing. That means a group of people who literally did not touch a basketball at all during those weeks, but simply visualized themselves doing it, did it just as well as those that practiced for an hour every single day. How crazy is that? But it does show the true power of your brain. This can be applied to any area in your life, whether it's more sports-related activities, money, relationships, goals, and so on. In fact, most successful people claim that one of the most powerful exercises they did was to visualize themselves as already being successful. 
Their brains then believe that they were already successful, which caused them to be in more alignment to that and to act and do things that successful people do. So whatever your goals are, I implore you to sit down and try visualizing the outcome you want. And if you do this for 30 minutes every single day, you will start to notice changes. All right, guys, thank you so much. How amazing. There you go. What do you think? What do you think of this idea of visualization? He says 30. I think you could do it in 10. You know, uh, successful salespeople uh, might visualize um, their call going really well uh, a few minutes before going in to meet a client, whether it's in person or online. So what do you think of the idea of visualization, visualizing it, seeing it in your mind's eye? Do you think it works? Is that something you can take on in this year ahead? You can write in the chat, yes, no, maybe. All right, quiet group. Uh, ah, good. Somebody wrote in the chat, thank God. Absolutely, yes, yes, good. Excellent. And that book I mentioned, this one, uh, talks about that, how to do it, right? And uh, I really uh, in, encourage you to, to, to practice. I'll tell you a, a real quick story, personal story. Um, I was going through a really rough time in my life. It was back in the late 90s. Um, I went through a divorce. Uh, I went through a job loss. I was unemployed. Didn't know what it was going to be. And I remember in February of that year, reading a book called The Monk who sold his Ferrari by Robin Sharma, who's Canadian author and speaker and coach. And he suggested this in the book, the monk who sold his Ferrari um, about the practice of visualization. And I would go to bed at night before I go to bed, I visualized myself teaching and I was in a different career then. And I really wanted to get into teaching and, and the work I do now coaching. So I'd visualize myself teaching and the room for whatever reason in my visualization, and I did this like at night, most nights, the room had light pink walls. Well, fast forward to the spring of that year and I got into a program, a training program called, it was a provincial, no, it was a federal training program then, now it's provincial or was, called the SCA program, the uh, Self-Employment Assistance Program. And I went there to start a business. And as I'm in this course, somebody came in to talk and teach about advertising. And so you've got to get this program was geared to people who are on um, unemployment insurance and starting a business. And when somebody came in to talk about advertising, we're all going, what? <laughs> advertising in the newspaper, radio and TV, like none of us can afford this. So it didn't get a great response or review from the participants in the class, my fellow classmates. So I thought, I have an idea for a workshop. And I went up to the course coordinator and I pitched the idea and I gave her a proposal. So this is August. And remember, I started to visualize this happening in February. So she liked the idea and she booked me to teach the day after Labor Day. It was a three hour workshop. I got paid hmm, $100 an hour and it was called Marketing on a Shoestring. And it was really geared to entrepreneurs who were starting out, who were on unemployment insurance, getting trained to start a business. And when you know the room was light pink. So this works. Next stop in creating our year is, is to look at developing our mission. And a mission, I guess the distinction between a mission and a vision is, the mission is more about the here and now, or the vision statement is more about, hey, in the future, you know, in five years from now, we want to be this. So you grow into your vision, right? The mission is about now. It's like, what, what, what do you want your customers, your stakeholders, your investors to know you for now, right? And, and again, it's very simple. You answer three simple questions. What do you do? Hey, we do car detailing. Who do you do it for? People who are really enthusiastic about, you know, having a cool looking car, right? And what's the result or outcome that your customer gets from you being in business? 
So you're answering those three questions and that's your mission. So your mission articulates your purpose. It announces to the world or your customers as to why you exist. And not only that, it shares what you do and how you do it and what's in it for the customer. So you just answer these three points. What do you do? So we sell shoes, we sell great food, we sell safety products to families, then share who you do it for. So families, or we sell shoes to uh, safety shoes, or we sell great food to um, people who are concerned about healthy eating, right? And then describe what the outcome is, what's in it for the customer, what's the, the joy they get, or what's the result you bring to the customer, okay? So th that's all you're answering. So here is an example of a couple. We sell safety shoes of the highest quality so every customer can find a pair of shoes they love to wear and can feel safe, comfortable, and able to get the tough, tough jobs done in them. Or we provide educational services that allow all children to experience learning success and become lifelong learners and contributing members of our community. So that's what we're striving for as you create your mission statement. Right. And this this should take you into next year. Like, what are you what are you about? Right. So what do you do? Who do you serve? And what's the outcome? What's that secret ingredient you bring to your client's life or business or even maybe their bottom line? So take a few minutes to write yours and you can show them in the chat and I'll read them. OK, so what do you do? Who do you serve? What's the outcome or value that you bring to your client? There are the examples. It's kind of what we're, we're looking for. Okay, another 30 seconds. All right, I'm just gonna go into chat and uh, see what we, we, um, we have here. Patty writes, offering healing energy uh, to animals of all shapes and sizes and species so they can reach an overall sense of peace and well-being. Yes, and the owners do too, because they, they, if they have a, an animal or a pet that is not well, they feel the same, right? They know that they're, they're, th there's a, a, a tranquility that comes over. Thanks, Patty. Ayla writes, I recycle sales into quality handmade products serve sailors who have retired sales taking up their storage space and people who need a great bag. Wow, cool. While being uh, good for the environment. Outcome, happy, fashionable customers. Sailors feel good about their old sales being used 
and not in landfill. Yes, excellent. Um, I like that, Ayla, and and I'd, I'd like to see um, your line. That sounds really cool. Um, good job, excellent, excellent work, good. So work on this, you know, over the holidays, maybe work on creating your vision and your mission and start to take your idea, see your idea, act on it, right? So moving forward and creating new beginnings, some things you might want to do is look at hiring helping hands. Remember, you don't have to do it all by yourself, the who, not how. And the book, The E-Myth Revisited, I, I mentioned um, um, Michael Gerber, uh, the author of The E-Myth, and um, he's... Uh, he, he's the fellow that coined the phrase, working on your business, not in it. And what that means is you want to create your business moving forward where you don't have to do everything, right? And you've actually got people helping you. And again, if, if, if it's on a budget, you can trade services, you can hire part-time people, you can hire virtual assistants and pay by the hour, right? So just you know, get that help you need moving forward to help you really create new beginnings. Uh, before I finish this list, I just want to go back into the chat. And Garrett writes, I offer auto, de auto detailing to individuals and companies who appreciate clean, tidy vehicles and a nice self-image. I bring or an organization, I bring organization in order to their lives without additional efforts on their part. I love it. And Garrett, there's a saying I heard someone um, once said, your car is your life. Meaning if your car is a mess, then chances are your life is too. So um, if you have a neat car and it's clean, relatively speaking, then your life is probably similar, right? So um, yeah. Thank you for sharing your, your um, mission statement. I like that. And it's short and to the point. Um, so yeah, get helping hands. Don't do it all by yourself. R really you know, um, encourage you to get that book, Who Not How. It's a, it's a good read. Um, remember to have balance, to rest if you're feeling you need to rest. Um, schedule creative days. So what do I mean by creative days? Creative days are days where you're just not doing your work, but you're maybe you're creative. Maybe you're painting a painting. Maybe you're reading. Maybe you're um, you know studying. Right? Have time in your your day to day you know routine to have days where you're just you're, you're going to stop the sort of day to day work and you're going to be creative. Maybe you go for a, a hike or a walk, right? Or you meet a friend. Things like that to get you away from the grind, get you away from the worry and the, the, the doing of your business and help you sort of, um, you know, decompress. And then you come back to the, the business the next day and you're, you're way more energized and your spirits are up. Um, have supports in place, you know, people that can help you, mentors, accountability partners, mastermind teams. Schedule your week the week before, you know, maybe Sunday, Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning. Plan your week, you know, ahead for the, you know, the week that's going to be in front of you. Um, do the first things first approach, as the late Dr. Stephen Covey said in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where it's like, okay, what do I need to do that's more important? What are my crucial tasks, as we alluded to at the beginning, right? Drink the frog, do first things first, take care of the hard things, and then the rest of the day, whoo, flows, right? And take the first step. And then the next, if you're a little worried about new beginnings and creating your big, hairy, audacious goals, moving forward, take a step. What's that step? And once you do one, you do the other and it gets easy, right? And please be mindful of these two things. We're almost done. We're gonna get you out of here on time, don't worry. But please be mindful of these two things, procrastination and perfectionism, because these are killers to your goals, your dreams, and your visions procrastination and perfectionism. I'm just gonna play a quick uh, three minute video and we'll come back and we'll talk about procrastination and perfectionism and then we'll wrap up the day. And if you have any questions, please ask. This is Mel Robbins who I quoted before. And she talks, um, this is an audio file, it's, it's on YouTube. Uh, and she's being interviewed by Darren Hardy. 
And Darren Hardy was the publisher of Success Magazine, which you can get, I think it's online and it's still at, at the bookstore. And um, back in the day, like maybe three, four years ago, Success Magazine would put in a CD uh, that you could listen to as you drove or work or whatever. And he would, uh, the CD would have like three interviews with featured uh, contributors in each issue. And Mel Robbins was one such contributor in one of these issues. And he interviewed her about her book, The Five Second Rule. And so real quick, I'll set it up. The Five Second Rule is about if you have a goal or you have a, um, an urge to do something, Count down five, four, three, two, one, and do it. Because the what happens is if you do the opposite and you think it about doing it for more than five seconds, you won't do it. But when you count it down, five, four, three, two, one, and you take action on your goal or or the BHAG, the big hairy audacious goal, and you take an action and you count down five, four, three, two, one, chances are you'll do it. Because what happens is the brain kind of thinks like, yeah, I don't know if I want to ask that girl out on a date because I might be embarrassed or I don't know if I want to call that client because I might screw up on the sales call, right? So when we, out when we overthink it for more than five seconds, we don't do it. But if we count down five, four, three, two, one, and we do it, magic happens. And this is what that interviews, this little interview is about, and it's three minutes. So here goes. I hope you get something from it. I, I, I like this, this clip. So I love this quote from your book. Each time you push through, you're making a long-term investment in yourself. Talk to us about that for a minute, because this is the reward on the, end, the uh, other side of the line by uh, doing the hard work of taking that action in the five seconds, going against what your brain is telling you. So talk to us about the long-term benefit to all this. You got it. Um, you know, because because you know the, the one takeaway, Darren, from all the the research that I've done and all the science that's in the book is that if you want to change anything about your life, just do the things that you don't feel like doing. It really does boil down to that. You're never going to feel like doing the things you need to do to have what you want. Your mind isn't wired that way. It will try to make you feel like things are too big. It'll try to make you feel like things are too scary. It'll try to make you feel like now's not the time. And so if you push through those feelings and, and take action, even though you don't feel like it, you'll have everything. The compound effect, the effect that you write about, Darren, will start to take hold. This whole book is about tricking people into how to take action. That's what this is about. And so, you know, the thing about that rule that's very important, Darren, is that over time, You've built a muscle to not listen to yourself. You've built the muscle of taking anti-actions, actions like surfing the web instead of making cold calls, uh, actions like watching TV instead of doing research, actions like uh, you know sitting around and, and, and putting stuff in your Twitter account that's nonsense instead of getting your butt out the door and going off and networking with people that might potentially help you with the business you wanna launch. You've filled your schedule with so much stuff that isn't important that it's squeezed all the time out of, of your schedule. So now you have a convenient excuse of, of not doing anything and the excuse of I, that you don't have any time. And so I think it's really important that what you realize about your life is that you're never going to feel like it. And if you start to push forward and take action anyway, it's like any other muscle. Over time, you slowly start building the muscle of taking action. You start building the muscle of not listening to your own crud. You start building the muscle of ignoring what your mind is telling you and operating from your, your desires instead of your fears. You start building the muscle of acting strategically instead of acting emotionally. And you can retrain your brain, absolutely. After a month of waking up and not hitting the snooze alarm, do you think it's gonna be hard or easy? It's gonna be easy. 
And the reason why is because by doing it every morning, you've made a long-term investment in yourself. You've built muscles that make you powerful and successful instead of maintaining the ones that keep you stuck. So, Matt. Wow, eh? Any comments? What do you think? So the book is called The Five Second Rule. came out a few years ago. Uh, she got a new book out. Um, you might want to check her out. She's got a beautiful interview talking about the book in a little bit more depth with Lewis Howes, H-O-W-E-S, uh, The School of Greatness on YouTube. And it's about a about an hour interview and it's very fascinating. And she's a speaker, a author, coach. Not she went through her, she had her own demons that she had to overcome to get to where she is. I'm just gonna um, check out the chat. Um, yeah, Patty, you read it. It's 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 a, it's a good book and a good read. So you just gotta watch to the curse of perfectionism. You know, don't don't get stopped by, well, yeah, I can't do it because it's got to be perfect. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Because it, it, it may be keeping you from actually moving forward, this curse of perfectionism. For example, let's say we're preparing a client presentation and we put 20% of our, our time into it to get 80% of the result. If we're just focused, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. Well, maybe for you, but maybe your idea of perfection is not your client. Maybe your client's okay with what you've done. So don't get stuck on it, on this idea of perfection. Get stuck on just like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And sometimes you just got to throw it on the field. You got to leave it on the field, right? Um, author Brene Brown, speaker and author um or doctor as well uh she's done a lot of research on perfectionism and healthy perfectionism isn't about you know having excellence it, it, it it's actually preventing you from moving forward and it's hiding this this need for, for perfectionism is hiding shame embarrassment and guilt because if you put your idea out there and somebody reacts in a negative way, the shame and the guilt that's attached with it is, is, is what perfectionism, perfectionism is trying to mask and hide. So it's, that's an important point. Just going to go to the um, uh, chat. Abby says 80% may be an overkill. 60 is good enough. Yeah, just do your best job, you know. Uh, your idea of perfect is not somebody else, right? Um, yeah, so she says that if I look perfect, do it perfect, work perfect, live perfect, I can avoid or minimize shame, blame, and judgment from others. And you have to be okay with shame, blame, and judgment, you know? It happens. Because people value authenticity. If you screw up and you admit it, you know, or let's say you made a mistake. I teach sales. So if you're if you're following up with a customer uh, that you're working with and they're not happy, then accept that criticism and say, hey, I get you're not happy. That means a lot. We want to we want to do a good job for you. What, what, what do we need to do to get to that? Right. What do we need to do in future? And then listen to your customer. Listen to the, the criticism, criticism. If you've done your best, that's all you can do. So listen to your customer and that, that feedback, for example, and act on it. And then if you show your customer that, hey, we listened and we acted, your customer is going to love you until the, you know, to the end of time. I guarantee it. They will. Right. So people value authenticity more than you being perfect. So because you give them permission to be real, too. Right. So lastly, face your fears. Moving forward, that big, hairy, audacious goal. Be okay with not being perfect. Perfect doesn't exist. Just get going, you know, practice that five second rule. Let's say you want to be healthier, you know, and tomorrow morning you you hear the temperature, it's minus six, and you don't really want to walk, but you know, if you do walk, you're going to get healthier, right? So count down five, four, three, two, one, put your shoes on your coat, your jacket, your toque, and your gloves, a scarf, and get going. Just do it. Take action and adjust as you go. Maybe it's not 
an hour walk because it's too cold. Maybe it's a 15 minute walk, but it's better than nothing, right? So be okay with not being perfect. Just do it and discover what makes you unique and focus on what makes you different, right? So own your difference moving forward as well. And we put the best to last. There's a joke in this. And it's the, the curse of procrastination. Get it? We put it off to the last. Okay. So ways to overcome procrastination. Again, do your planning. Set your priorities. Remember, is it crucial, not crucial? Chunk things down. Like some of you have some big, hairy, audacious goals. Chunk it down. Do a bit o- over time. Like, like Abby, with your operations manual, do a bit over time. In other words, you know, Rome was not built in a day. And just take a, you know, do a little bit every day. If you're if you're writing your book, do do a little bit of writing every day, or do a little bit of writing every once a week, right? Schedule the big tasks in your planner and assign a specific amount of time. You don't want to be there like all day doing something, because that that's like your chain to the desk. You want to sort of okay, I'm gonna I have a big goal. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time, and then you know and set you know, reasonable deadlines and stick to it. Again, have somebody hold you accountable. And did you know that if um, if you have something pleasurable too to look forward to, you'll find it much easy, easier to do than sticking to a, you know, New Year's resolution or a goal. So make, make what you're doing pleasurable. And we have a bonus tip. Um, and that, that bonus tip is in terms of overcoming procrastination, you know, it's it's simple. I'm quoting Nike here. Just do it. Just do it. Just act, as Mel Robbins alluded to. So here's some um, resources, uh, some websites to check out. Uh, Balancetime.com, CrisisExperts.com, CyberWorking.com, get a grip on your life.com, and get organized now.com. So some resources that can help you. And here's where you get a hold of me. If you have any questions, you want to email me, you got a question, um, I'd be happy to, to, to do that. And talking about questions, I'm going to go back to resources. Does anybody have any questions before we wrap up our, our day today? <laughs>